the Florida Gators are um, pretty good at, at, at stickball, we'll say. And we're going to talk about it only here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. Wherever you listen to the podcast, we are available daily and free. Happy Tuesday. I'm Brandon Olson. You can find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. My written work is with Whole Nine Sports and GiantsCountryFSI.com. And I am going to have an episode up later this morning because, um, I got stuck in Jersey last night. Car troubles, yay. Uh, good thing I have Rock Auto. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, a little little later than usual, but we're going to get into it. We're talking about baseball, then softball, and then the NBA Finals, because that Gator is walking away with the ring. But first, baseball. The Florida Gators men's baseball team, obviously, because it's baseball. The Florida Gators baseball team is the number 13 seed in the NCAA tournament, and that is amazing given that for a solid stretch of the season, a lot of people just absolutely lost confidence in this Florida Gators baseball team for one reason or another. You know, going into the season, it was, well, this pitching staff is kind of a couple question marks on it. How are they going to react? How are they going to react throughout a full season? How are they going to hold up through a full season if there are any injuries or anything? Um, And look, everything bounced back. Everything got into shape. And a lot of people talk about the start of the season because to open the year, the Florida Gators lost the season opening series against the Liberty Flames two games to one. And then a couple weeks later... When Florida was getting back on track, and it was okay. Like now, now we're seeing this team where they they should be just completely dominant. They dropped one game to Seton Hall, and I get it. Where you know it, it, it's a three game series. It's very possible that you lose one of the games. That happens. But Seton Hall to start the year was historically bad. Like it was terrible. It's like. You know, we had Florida Gators uh, men's basketball lost to Texas Southern, I believe it was, when they were like 0-7. And then they beat a ranked Florida team. And then Seton Hall was just in the dumpster. And then they beat a Florida team. And I was like, what is going on? But the, but the baseball team, uh, they did manage to turn things around. And it feels safe to say that the story of the Florida Gators uh, – athletics program from the 2021-2022 academic season is perseverance. You know, you you look at that basketball team where they lost to Texas Southern and they lost to teams they shouldn't have lost to. And then they started rattling off wins and, and fighting back despite uh, incompetent coaching, I'll say. You look at the women's basketball team and they, I mean, immediately their expectations got demolished with a head coach change and then they got off to a slow start and then they got off to, and they went on a massive heater to kind of get back and, and get into the NCAA women's tournament. And then you look at this baseball team where they started off a little slow. Uh, they dropped a few games that they shouldn't have dropped. Uh, and then they, they started really, really getting into things and they're getting hot at the right time. That's an important thing to talk about because you look at the SEC tournament that was last week, this past weekend, and uh, Florida had a bit of a wild run because they started off with a win against South Carolina in extras, then a massive 10 nothing loss to Texas A&M, which was uh, disheartening to say that like, like they lost that game to Texas A&M, and it was like, well, thin ice now for the Florida Gators. But then they rattled off wins against Arkansas. Uh they beat Bama. Then they played Texas A&M a second time, and they won that game. 
nine nothing. So Texas A and M had a plus one run differential against Florida during the SEC tournament. Congrats! Uh, and then Florida ran into that buzzsaw, the absolute buzzsaw that is the Tennessee Volunteers um, on Sunday afternoon. Lost that game eight to five, which I mean, hey. You know, you, you take that when you can, given how good Tennessee has been this year. Um, and then the Gators are the number 13 seed in the NCAA tournament, which is awesome. Uh, the Gators host the Gainesville regional part of this tournament, uh, where they host Central Michigan this coming Friday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, also in the Gainesville region are Oklahoma and Liberty, and they play this Friday at 1 o'clock in their first game. And for those of you who don't know, the Gainesville Regional is a double elimination tournament from Friday through Sunday. If it needs to get into Monday, then it will be finished on Monday, but usually Sunday. The winner takes on... The winner of the Gainesville Regional takes on the winner of the Blacksburg Regional, which consists of Virginia Tech, Gonzaga, Columbia, and... Right state with the winner of that going on to the College World Series. That is now 14 regional appearances in a row. 14 consecutive regional appearances for Kevin O'Sullivan and the Florida Gators baseball team. And hopefully we'll see more uh, World Series appearances this year for the Florida Gators. We're about to get to the softball stick ball one. But first, a quick word from Bet Online because the NBA Finals are set which we are going to talk about in the third segment today. But the Boston Celtics, Golden State Warriors tip off this Thursday. Baseball is well underway. Teams, you're, you're kind of figuring out who's who. And the Reds are no longer 3-45 in 45 or whatever they started the year with. It was very, very, very bad. Uh, it was very fun to just bet against them every game. But no more. Now things are getting a little more difficult, a little more fun. And it's all with Bet Online, which is your number one. One source for all of your betting needs and sports information, not just sports, but reality TV, award shows, e-gaming, e-sports. If you're into that, that's a, that's a blast about on League of Legends. It's a lot of fun. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn all about the trends and action. Check out Bet Online. It's where the game starts. Thanks again for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. Now we're getting into the softball portion of today's show and the Florida Gators softball team has once again made it to the women's college world series because they are headed to Oklahoma City um, which we'll get to how they got into that game how they got into the women's college world series but you know other stuff first Uh, the Gators start the tournament by taking on Oregon State this Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time in Oklahoma City. I'm specifying the time zone because, I mean, first of all, games in Oklahoma. Um, but it's 7 p.m. Eastern time since we are all, or well, Gainesville, uh, and that, that Florida, that area of Florida, Eastern time. Um, but this is a softball team that started off the season 16 and 0, um, and then and then had a few bumps along the way. Finished the rest of the season with a 32 and 17 record, which is very good for an overall record of 48 and 17. And it's wild because the Florida Gators softball team started the season 16, like I just said, but then there were a couple of legitimate points either before the season or during this season where some Gator fans were calling for the head of Tim Walton. Um, and if you're not a softball person, Tim Walton is the Gators softball head coach. Uh, and I, I think it's funny and weird because I think a few, quite a few Florida fans kind of just got into the, I don't want to say habit, but kind of just got into the mentality of just going, you know what, we're going to be trigger happy because we're liking how the replacements are getting hired, where you look at football and Dan Mullen, you know, he, uh, he, he found success the past couple years in Gainesville, had one bad year with the football team, and he got fired. And then you look at Mike White, who he had a lot of bad years with the basketball team, and he with the men's basketball team, 
uh, and he didn't get fired, but it, it, writing was on the wall that he wasn't going to be in Gainesville next year, and it was either going to be he takes a job elsewhere or he gets fired. So, yes, Mike White didn't get fired, but he was going to most likely if he stood around in Gainesville. Uh, so Florida Gators fans, you know, were calling for Dan Mullen's head, and it worked, and Dan Mullen got fired, and everybody is very happy with his replacement in Billy Napier. Uh, Florida Gators fans were calling for Mike White's head, and Mike White didn't get fired, but he left Gainesville. And people are very happy with Todd Golden replacing him. And then there's, of course, the women's basketball team, who I don't want to talk about the other guy uh, that was there before, but he got fired right before he left, right before the season. And Kelly Ray Finley took over the women's basketball team, and there was immediate, instant success with Kelly Ray Finley and this women's and this women's basketball team. But uh, I, I I think Gators fans got a little too trigger happy with calling for Tim Walton's head, calling for Kevin O'Sullivan's head at certain points where when things just weren't going well and it was and I think a lot of people use the argument that we use with Dan Mullen of, you know, he's a fine coach, just didn't work out, just not his time, you know, whatever, like, like he lost the locker room, whatever it might be. Um, there's a very big difference between Kevin O'Sullivan, Tim Walton, and Dan Mullen. Because, well, Sully and Tim Walton have, have done it consistently for quite a few years now. Um, so I think they got too happy or too trigger happy to get rid of coaches that didn't consistently provide the, this instant gratification. Um, even though the Gators have been consistently good at both stickball sports, uh, baseball and softball. And so I'm glad that Tim Walton is still here. I'm glad Kevin O'Sullivan is still here. Uh, the Florida Gators are stunningly the only team from the SEC to make the Women's College World Series, which, again, it is wild because the SEC is usually consistently pretty good, but this year only Florida made it. Florida was the 14th seed that absolutely dominated the number three seed, Virginia Tech, this past Sunday with a 12-0 win. It was the first time that Virginia Tech has been run-ruled since March. I forget the exact date, but March of 2021, which is insane. That is very consistent. And also, Florida Gators baseball team could be playing Virginia Tech's baseball team uh, in the next round. We'll see what happens after the regionals, but that's a fun little thing where the... uh, the baseball team and the softball team could link up in the tournaments, and then that's just a really fun thing. Um, but this is a Florida Gators softball team that just just, just clearly had a never-say-die attitude. And when when the light, and as cliched as it sound, sounds, when the lights came on and it was win or go home, this team made their decision to hunker down. And they were like, well... We ain't going home, so we're going to do that. And they showed up in the absolute biggest way possible. And that's not something you can say for a lot of people because it's hard to show up in that moment. Um, so for the Florida Gators softball team to show up, to do their thing, to to consistently produce at that point and get hot when they needed to, um, that that is just remarkable. And this team is like, like the baseball team. They are getting hot at the right time. And that that's what you want. You want to be playing your best ball at the end of the season because, of course, that's when it counts the most. So Florida Gators softball team this Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time takes on Oregon State. And hopefully we're going to be watching Florida Gators softball team for a little while longer uh, all the way through Oklahoma. And then hopefully that's how the season will end with a trophy being held up at the end of it, but we're about to switch gears and get into the NBA Finals. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. To wrap up today's show, we are talking about the NBA Finals, which I usually don't do here, um, but I feel like it's important to do because the NBA Finals have been set. Uh, they, they were set on Sunday night or Saturday night. If I don't, if I don't have my dates mistaken, it was Sunday night um, when the Boston Celtics beat the Miami Heat in Game 7. And now we have the Boston Celtics versus the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. Al Horford for the Florida from the Florida Gators 
Al Horford is on the Boston Celtics. He will be representing the Florida Gators for the Eastern Conference. Uh, he is in his first career finals at 35 years old. Then Chris Chioza is representing the Florida Gators for the Western Conference with the Golden State Warriors. Um, Chris Chioza, of course, significantly younger. He was all, he was a Gator just a few years ago, um, but now he is a Golden State Warrior. He does not he he doesn't play a ton. Um, so there's that, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, the Celtics were un, under 500 by three games, I believe, in January. And then now, just four months later, uh, they are taking on the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. And that is ridiculous. Uh, it is really cool, though. And look, I'll be happy no matter which team wins. Um, I'm not an NBA analyst. I'm not going to go super in-depth here. I'm going to say that I will be happy uh, with, with whichever team wins because it will mean that a Florida Gator is getting a ring, and that's always a big win for the Gators. Um, but I will say that I'm pulling more for the Boston Celtics, uh, which I'm one of the only Knicks fans, I think, that are doing that. But uh, I'm a Knicks fan, yes. But I used to be a massive fan. Ray John Rondo fan when it was yes they had KG they had Ray Allen they had Paul Pierce big baby Shaq they had all these people um but Rondo was like my dude so I was I, I was a big Rondo fan so I, I liked the Celtics because he was there for a long time obviously so uh kind of just got into the habit of liking Rondo with them uh so there there's that um but also yes both teams have a Florida Gator on the roster, but Al Horford is a starter for the Boston Celtics, whereas Chris Chioza is more often than not inactive. As cool as he is, like we we had a great time with him in Gainesville, um, but as cool as he is, he is inactive and uh, throughout the entirety of the playoffs. So yeah, I'm, I'm going for the, I'm rooting for the team that has a Florida Gator that actually plays. Uh, Al Horford also just has a pretty good matchup uh, because he's got Kevon Looney, who, I mean, playoff Looney is like a Hall of Fame player, apparently. But but for most of the regular season, uh, Looney did not have a good time against other very talented centers. So Al Horford, hopefully big day, or obviously, I mean, it depends on Robert Williams, who's going to be at center at that point or whatever, but you get the point. If Al Horford gets matched up with Looney, it's going to be a good day for him. Um, and so, yeah, like also, again, the main reason being Al Horford plays Chris Chiosa does not, if it were Celtics versus, uh, the Dallas Mavericks, I think you'd physically see me being torn in two on this, on this show, because, uh, it'd be Al Horford versus Dorian Finney Smith. And similar to how with the Celtics, I'm like, well, when I was younger, I was a big Rajon Rondo fan, and I, I loved Rondo so much. With the Dallas Mavericks, it's when I was younger, I was a massive Dirk fan, um, where I've got his autograph. You can't see it, obviously, but it's right over there in my house. Um, I, I, have, I have a picture of him holding the Larry O'Brien when they won, and the uh, and it's autographed by him, and it's really cool. It was a Christmas gift one year, and it's awesome because I love Dirk. Uh, so, I, so I got that. So it would have been the Celtics who I like because of Rondo and because they have a Gator versus the Mavs who I like because of Dirk and because they have a Gator. Uh, so I, I would have been just physically torn into had they been taking on each other. But uh, luckily for my sanity, it is the Boston Celtics versus the Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors are favorites right now on Bet Online to win the series. Um, the Warriors are favored. It is minus 150 for the Warriors, plus 130 for the Celtics. So if you want to bet on those, go nuts. Uh, you, have, you have plenty of time because this is coming out. It's probably going to come out Tuesday around 11 a.m. ish. Um, and, and guess what? The play, the finals start Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern time, which is going to be like right about the time that the Florida Gators softball team will be wrapping up against Oregon State, hopefully with a big win there um or hopefully the game's going because it's like third inning and florida's up for you got nothing um we'll, we'll see um but yeah so, so boston celtics 
with Al Horford taking on the Golden State Warriors, kind of with Chris Chioza. Starts this Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. The Warriors are slightly favored to win this series, but it's going to be a good one either way. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Ime Udoko, the Boston Celtics head coach, kind of uh, game plans around Steph Curry and all those players in the Warriors because he did such a good job of defending KD, of defending Giannis, and then now he's got Steph Curry. Uh, so a little bit of a different player type there. It's going to be interesting to see how they stick that up. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. We'll be back tomorrow with more on your Florida Gators. Now make your second listen, Lockdown SEC, hosted by Chris Gordy of Sports 790. Lockdown SEC covers the entire SEC every day. The best place that you will find SEC coverage on the daily. And I know who else I'm talking about when I say this, but it's Chris Gordy with Lockdown SEC. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Whole Nine Sports. That is W H O L E N I N E Sports and GiantsCountryVestSide.com. And I will see you all tomorrow.